Hello and welcome. My name is Jenny Florence and I'm the author and the creator of the A to Z of Emotional Health online audio library. I'm also the author and creator of Emotional Meditation. I have created today's meditation specifically in support of anyone who may be struggling with bereavement, particularly with Christmas and New Year in mind. Emotional meditation is a process of strengthening and deepening our emotional understanding combined with a two-part meditation. I'm sure we're all familiar with the saying, knowledge is power. And as far as our emotions go, this is actually very true. If we feel something and we don't understand it, we can easily feel completely overwhelmed by the volume or the intensity of our feelings. However, if we understand what's actually happening to us, if we understand why we're feeling the way that we are, And if we understand our emotions, then whatever we're going through, we can somehow make sense of it. And this kind of understanding can actually stop the intensity of our emotional experiences spiraling into something much bigger. So in each emotional meditation, I first talk about some aspect of our emotions. And today that will be about bereavement and grieving. Very specifically about bereavement and grieving over the Christmas period. We will then move into the first part of our meditation, where we focus on emotional tension and emotional release. Having allowed our emotions to be heard, to have a voice and to be calmed, We will then move into a more traditional meditation experience, a space of stillness and calm. So let's talk about grieving. Let's talk about a few of the emotional experiences that may come up for us during this time. I think the first really useful thing to say is that Grieving is a very private affair. It's a unique and individual experience, and even though we will share similar experiences with others, ultimately the way that we grieve and the length of time it takes us to grieve will be unique to each of us. And because, of course, each of our relationships are different, the way that we grieve for one person will be very different from the way in which we grieve for another. When I talk to people who are in a place of loss, I often describe the process as being rather like installing a new and extremely large program on a computer. When you install a large program, lots of the other programs actually slow down the computer's functionality isn't as fast as it would normally be. In fact, some programs that you might run on a daily basis actually stop working altogether. And of course, the computer can take quite a while to reconfigure itself. I think grieving is rather like this. We don't choose to lose someone. And so inevitably, loss feels completely out of our control. And so we didn't have a choice in the installation of this particular program. It was started by a loss, and once started, it needs to run its course. We can't switch it off or reverse the process. We can't go back to a previous setting. And of course, this kind of program doesn't stop for Christmas. In fact, celebration times like Christmas and birthdays and anniversaries will actually create the equivalent of a kind of pop-up or an add-on to the existing program that's now running. 
When we grieve, we are not only looking back and remembering the times that we had with that person, but of course we are actually grieving for the future. We're grieving for the future that we no longer have with them. And we're grieving for the times right now that we can't have with them. So the process of grieving is rather like a timeline. It stretches back into memory. It's present with us now. And it also stretches ahead. And any occasions when we would have shared special moments with the person that we've lost will inevitably open up a lot of feeling. And this can mean that sometimes remembering the good times that we've had with someone can be incredibly hard to bear in the face of their absence. Our loss can feel so great. When we experience this level of intensity of feeling, I think it's really important to remember that the intensity of our feelings is always relative to the quality of the relationship that we had with someone. So when we experience intense sadness at the loss of someone close, it's actually a testimony to the quality of that relationship. It's a testimony to the love and the regard that we had with that person. I think it's important to keep this in mind. I am a great believer in emotional self-care. Our emotional health and well-being underpins both our physical health as well as our mental health. And bereavement is a time when we need to be particularly mindful of this. It's really important when we're feeling raw and emotionally vulnerable that we can make space for ourselves and we can ask the people around us to be respectful of that. As I said earlier, grieving is a very private and a very personal experience. Interestingly, being with loved ones, particularly around Christmas time, can have quite a double edge to it. Sometimes being around people who are joyous and happy can be a very stark reminder of our own loss. And even though the intention of being together may have been completely the opposite, our real experience of spending time with friends and family can actually generate very powerful feelings of emptiness and sadness. And this in turn can bring up some very challenging and conflicting emotions. Guilt is a good example of this. Guilt is always present in the process of grieving and it's one of the emotions that we often don't quite know how to deal with and it often causes us a lot of conflict. We can feel guilty being around our family and friends because we're not feeling happy and we don't want to bring them down. They may have gone to a great deal of trouble to try and make us feel welcome and okay. But then on the other hand, if we do begin to relax and have a good time, we can then feel guilty towards the person that we've lost. As if somehow by relaxing and enjoying ourselves, we are in some way being disrespectful to them. In fact, sometimes we can actually feel guilty about ever being okay again. We can be afraid that if we stop thinking about them for even just one second, we'll somehow forget them forever. And of course, this really isn't the case, but it's something that often shows up, particularly in the early stages of loss. Another challenging emotion that is always present during the process of bereavement and frequently takes us by surprise is anger. If we think about it logically, if someone or something that was important to us is taken away and we had no choice in the matter, then we will have every right to feel angry. It's a natural response. And yet anger is one of the emotions that so many of us really struggle to come to terms with 
during the running of this incredibly large programme. Sometimes we are aware of our anger, but sometimes we're not, and sometimes it can surface as a kind of a lack of tolerance in situations that wouldn't normally bother us. If we don't quite know how to find a voice for our anger, it will tend to find its way to the surface in everyday kinds of situations. And we may feel frustrated and irritated far more easily by everyday circumstances. Situations that might previously have been just a little bit irritating may evoke far more anger than usual. And that can then open up another package of guilt because we then feel bad for overreacting. It's so important that we recognize that these feelings and responses are completely natural. If we don't quite understand what's going on, we can really get into quite an emotional pickle, which in reality is the last thing that we need when we are already feeling vulnerable and raw. Now, I've already said that I'm very big on emotional self-care And so before we move into a meditation together, I'm just going to talk about some golden rules for managing bereavement over this period. The first is to take time out whenever you need it. And ahead of time, explain this to your family and friends and ask them to respect your need to do this. It's not a reflection on them in any way, shape or form. It's simply something you may need to do. Generally speaking, I think in my experience, if we tackle something ahead of time and request something, it very rarely causes a problem. Problems tend to occur because people don't understand what's going on. Remember, knowledge is power, and that applies not just to us in understanding ourselves, but also in the way that others will respond to us when they understand what we're going through and what we need. The second golden rule is to give yourself permission to share as little or as much as you wish. Grief is a private affair. It is deeply personal and we have the right to our dignity. If you don't feel you wish to talk about something, then say so. It's not a reflection on the people you're with, and it's perfectly okay to say, I'd prefer not to speak about it at the moment, but thank you. With the very best of intentions, and for the very best possible reasons, people tend to assume that we will need what they would need if they were in our situation. But of course, our needs may actually be quite different. And it's really okay to let people know this. The third golden rule is, each day, make a specific time to remember the person that you've lost. Place a boundary around this time and make sure that anyone around you is aware of this and gives you the privacy that you need. You may wish to combine or conclude this time with this meditation. During this time, dedicate your thoughts to the person that you've lost and do something to mark their passing. Write them a card or a letter or go for a walk. Do whatever feels most appropriate for you. And as you spend time thinking about them, honor and appreciate the time that you had together. Give your feelings your full attention. Acknowledge and validate the way that you feel. Everything that we feel during the process of bereavement is completely natural, even if we don't always quite understand it. And at the end of the time that you have allowed for this in your day, give thanks and then go and have as good a time as you can. Because people we love would want this for us. So let's now meditate together.
In the first part of our meditation, as you hear the singing bowl, we will focus on allowing the release of any emotional tension. We'll make some space to listen to ourselves. A time of gentle holding where our emotions can be heard and be mindfully released. Many of us feel quite vulnerable about expressing our emotions and so as we begin the first part of our meditation it's very important that you make sure that you're in a safe place. And we'll also be mindful to let go of any need for self-analysis or mental understanding of any emotions that surface. And we'll release any concerns or criticisms or judgments about the way that we feel. In the second part of our meditation, as you hear the singing bowl again, we will move to a place of stillness and calm. A place of thoughtful limits, knowing that we can choose to return to a place of further release at a later time, as and when we need to. So making sure that you are in a safe place, get into a comfortable position and close your eyes and allow yourself to breathe naturally, gently and deeply. We carry our emotions in our physical body and the process of grieving is actually experienced by many of us as a very physical process. We can carry so much grief and sadness inside of us and it's so important that we allow ourselves to let those feelings out. I'm sure we all know that bottling up our feelings and trying to keep a lid on things really isn't particularly helpful for us. So very gently bring your attention to any areas in your body where you're feeling any kind of unease or discomfort. Let's really allow ourselves to listen to ourselves. And let's give our emotions a voice. The emotions that surface as a result of loss are incredibly challenging. But you know one thing is absolutely certain that whatever you are feeling, any emotions that are surfacing will be a natural and appropriate response to the events that are taking place in your world. They'll be appropriate to this process of grieving. So let's just allow emotions to surface and, and give our emotions a voice.
Simply allow any emotions to surface, to be heard. It's time to place a safe boundary around this part of our meditation. It's time to bring the release of emotions to a close. When we allow emotional tension to be released, and as we give our emotions a voice, we can then allow ourselves to relax and Move gently into a space of stillness. Continue to breathe naturally, gently and deeply. And as you hear the singing bowl again, we'll draw our meditation to a close.
it's time to draw our meditation to a close. Even though loss is such an integral part of life, the process of grieving is an incredibly challenging journey. However, one thing is absolutely certain. To navigate this journey, we really do need to give our emotions a voice. It is so important that we can become actively involved in our own self-care during this process and that we take time as and when we need it to allow our emotions to be heard and that we allow our feelings to arrive and to be received with care and with the deepest compassion. Take care.